better than one. And there is no greater two than two that is in the marriage. Number four, number three, sorry. The three legs, three legs of marriage must found expressions in their marriage relationship. The three legs of marriage must found expressions in the relationship of the minister. Marriage were the three legs. In Iana, this, uh, what they call it now, camera, only the three legs, and a boy had a tripod. Before that, three legs, eh? anyone who bought you the camera had that. So the same thing, marriage with three legs. Number one leg is love. Love is not just a word. Love is commitment. Sometimes I don't tell my wife I love her. I also tell her I'm committed to you. For 23 years, I am standing in love. Oh, more great than our sugar and wine. We are falling in love. The married ones don't fall in love. The married one, they stand in love. So I have been standing in love with a woman for more than 23 years of my life. Love is commitment. Number one, love is selfless. Love is not selfish. Number three, love is sacrifice. If truly you love somebody, be ready to make sacrifices for that person. Or number four, love is commitment. Commitment. Sorry, love is giving. So I have talked about commitment, selfless, sacrifice, and giving. And giving. For God so loved the world. What's the next? He gave. So love is expressed by what you give to your wife. Over all sorts of material things, affection, smile, kindness, mercy, forgiveness. These are the things you give as an expression of love. So the first leg of marriage is love. The second one is trust. Trust. You don't command it. You earn it. N E A R O N. You earn trust. Some ministers and leaders, their partner don't trust them. Sincerely speaking, they don't trust their relationship between their opposite sex. They don't trust them. And marriage, I'm reading him as you must have trust me. Mm -mm. Trust. Is something you earn by the way you behave. No trust, no marriage. No trust, no business. So, one of the things you must build so strongly, the minister, is trust. If you don't have it in your marriage, sir, the worst thing you make is when your partner don't trust you. When your wife don't trust you. When your husband don't trust you. It's a matter. The third one is understanding. That's the third leg. Understanding. Ability to understand each other. Understand your love language. Understand how your wife behaves. Understand how your husband behaves. You must study. I'm going to make a man I'm happy. When her mom may me, she will be very happy. So I need to understand my wife, my husband, so that we can live together. I was teaching one day and I said to the marriage that love alone is not enough in marriage. Love alone. I love my wife. I love my wife. It's not enough. It is the way you express that love. That is, what you say, me Susie, your husband, and a boy attitude. You can have good character, but you wrong attitude. 
character is your way of behavior. Attitude is the way you relate. I'm not going to know what your name. He is a man of God. Who is a good character? Man, we wrong attitude in relationship with the wife. The wife are not complain. The man is in time. No two say I want you open your like here. Man, the man of baseball man, good man. Man, attitude problem. So understanding of your partner will make you to behave well in relating with him or her. Am I blessing anybody? These are the three legs of marriage. So these three legs must find the expression in your relationship. You must love each other. You must have trust for one another. And you must have better understanding on way to relate with one another. Number four, the three pillars of marriage must reflect in their relationship. Three pillars. Pillar is weight carrier. A man man a pillar, they got an award like it. They are the weight carriers of this building. So pillar in marriage is something that carries the weight or pressure of that marriage. It must be found in your relationship. And there are three also pillars. Number one pillar, respect. It doesn't matter how much respect is reciprocal. If you respect a small child, he will reciprocate. Respect your wife. Respect your husband. Don't talk down on her. No woman can thrive in an environment where she is disrespected. No. You did not do that. In fact, in my own family, people know that if you insult me, I will tolerate it. But if you insult my wife, I will deal with you. I will deal with you. I won't tolerate that one. But if you insult me, I will. But don't insult her. Respect them. No man can become his best in an environment where he is not dis- dishonored. When you dishonor your husband, the beast in him will come out. The beast. Honor your husband, respect your each other. Very important. It's a pillar. It will have a lot of things to help in your marriage. Now, second one is honesty. Be honest. As a man of God, as a woman of God, in your relationship with your partner, be honest. Let your wife vouch for you. My husband is an honest man. Be honest. Let your year be year, your name be name. Be honest in your relationship. Let it live. Some of us, the way we handle our phones. Some ministers. I have more than five email addresses. My wife, Mara, the password of all of them. Oftentimes, because I'm a very busy person, she will read the mail and then tell me to reply. Can you get a reply? There are some ministers, G, password, lock, or phone. In fact, one of them, I was telling them, was some no, no pri- private phone. You see, he be a kidnapper. What kind of private phone is this? What is marriage? It is marrying everything together. Marriage is marrying your opinion, your values, your interests, your pursuit, your purpose, your ideology together. It's very unfortunate. Because we have all these dealings, 
our relationship with people. That's why I just got the phone. I for now, you see, phone had in a toilet. So I know you see. On our way, our phone in a bedroom. On our charge, you open your knock on our own so. Phone, you go. If you go, you see, we boss. Oh, yes, I can't get no phone. Can you hear that true phone? No, too. When I come home, you can't get phone. You need to be called Jesus. Let me go and rest. Also, my phone, you go in the gym every day this week. But then, say, who get? I have to off it. Otherwise, they will be calling. You need to build an honest life that will help you the ministry. Otherwise, people will believe you, but your wife will be doubting you. You know, you go up in the man and ask, hey, Amen. I'm not ever on a fence. I'm a worker. The third one is forgiveness. That's the third pillar of marriage forgiveness. Ability to forgive your partner. Forgiveness is not a mere word. Forgiveness is an attitude. If you have truly forgiven, attitudinally, show it. Show it attitudinally. Man, he put you some conditionalities that will be making that forgiveness a matter. For instance, say, I go win again. Man, in the general palo. Now, Allah. Or Jorge is a nature in the bar. Now, Toga Luce. I don't Toga Luce in a room. Baba in a room. Ibon Aragia, man, he did in your city. No. Ibon Arago Jiggy, or Jim Metunaka, say, I don't have a river. On us, okay, boy, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, what type of forgiveness is that? Forgiveness is not a word, it's an attitude. Number two, I wrote a book on forgiveness, so I know what I'm dealing with. I wrote a book on forgiveness. Forgiveness is no forgetfulness. Hey, actually, I'm going to say, for you, I didn't make them go up, I'm not going to say, you will always remember. But even when you remember, you have forgiven. That is the true color of forgiveness. Forgiveness should be without resentment. What is the meaning of that? This is no eba agakita. Owe buro nyaha. This is no eba garago na api otua. Opi go barwa. Acho mi keni. Brother Kekun man. Yes, you just dodge him. Then you have resentment. You need to go and deal with. One of the things he do the minister so come more born forgiving spirit. Anglican Theological Institution, the rector called me and said, Evangelist, we read your book on forgiveness and we adopted it as authority in the institution. No, 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 because many of So you need to know the principles of forgiveness. A marriage, if you are not ready to forgive, don't marry. Because marriage is a union of two good forgivers. Union of two good forgivers. Bible say that love covered how many sin? Multitude. I don't think now my wife may go multitude of sin. Now this 23 years the money have gone. That my love cannot cover it. Love covered how many sin, please? Multitude. When you again may go multitude of sin. Why can't you forgive? And let go and let God have his way. And the last one is on this matter of forgiveness. The conditionalities attach. Jesus, Capitan Juro, how many times will my brother offend me and I will stop forgiving? Peter was so generous. See, seven times. 
mana ndi igbo si no ruo na nke ito omege ni oto mana peter si seven jesus said no i do not say to you seven instead i say 70 which is 490 times in a day if you can forgive 490 times in a day my friend your name is forgiveness Open mind. Forgive your wife. Forgive your husband. I'm the young people. If you are not ready to forgive, don't go into marriage. Eh? I didn't mean, take what nonsense. Marriage is full of nonsenses. So if they take nonsense, I can never. You must adjust yourself to forgive. Am I blessing any life? Now I'm done with the mission marriage for now. Because I need to go to the family issue. Family. In my topic, the Ozonabo, the minister stroke leaders marriage and home. So the home front is a family, isn't it? I, we, do we agree? So let me give you 10 points on that very quickly. Number one, family is a group of people who are closely elected to each other by blood, by marriage, or by adoption. Family is a group of people, but they are closely related to each other, either by blood, that is birth, or by issue of marriage, or by adoption. By adoption. The number two, the family it's a small cell of the church and society. The family is a small cell of the church and the society. Anybody for a nozo or nahia or na church come from one family or the other. True or false? So family is a small cell. Number three. Family is the source and origin of human beings. Family is the source and the origin of human beings. It doesn't matter monya how you che more bat wanya more be amunya amoria out of marriage wedlock. Anyway, the, the family, the human being can be traced to. Also, make it a dick. The Bible what I know where on. Any family he can be traced. Even Jesus Christ with a family he can be traced to. People say, Oh, I know Munea no Jeba. Or on my carpenter. Go on, then I'm going to tell you what you need. Number four, many people are proud of their families, but some are not. Many are proud. Some of us neighbor Akita. It may be that you are not even proud of the family you came from. But that is not what I'm dealing with. Are your children proud of your own family? Are your own children proud of your family? Nebu pastor, onye do to a evangelist, onye do to a apostle, onye do to a ibu leader in different are your children. My wife and I, we have a body to do conferences for gospel minister children. Is any of you aware of that conference? Anybody? We have done it for three years now. The last one we did was in this August. It was it was something else. Now, children of clergymen, pastors, bishops, archbishops, reverend, different categories, they were there with us, many, many, many of them. It's a free conference, free registration, free accommodation, free freedom. My wife and I, we were there with them and other ministers for four days, Thursday to Sunday. Now, while I'm bothered is the fact that some of these children are not happy with the family they came from. Some are not even proud with the family they came from because of the lifestyle of their parents. So your own children, how are they feeling? Are they proud of you? 
ama mo na no no ga bi mata kresi ma bu pastor no wa ma eh ma no ene ku ha bu mo pastor do you know that expression is because what i saw i don't saw any dignity in this job i have children the number 5 is it 5 or 4 now those that ought to be proud of families fathers mothers children and even house helps those that are supposed to be proud of their family is you is your wife your children and the house helps those that are living with you i was opportune to preach in a meeting I was opportune to preach in a meeting of apprentice that is home boy na house helps very large meeting and these are uh, home boy na house helps in the believers that is the hand and the bone again this was a convention and i was like what do i tell these children i think the lord laid in my heart to do an interactive section with them So I asked them who is your role model? Then I went home to Omo boy and the house help and and the pastor CB minister CB leader CB. Can you know your role model? Honestly sincerely I was expecting for them to be mentioning eh the names of those people and have I was afraid to tell you sirs and mas the names i heard some of them i don't even know them but don't wake up one hand say okay onye din ka or some no one gospel the artist hip hop artist cos no gain na abroad and i was so curious to ask are there no people here that the leaders the pastors the ministers they are living with but they are model for life one young man when he came and see with Jerry and Mike Yes yeah, sim na No we dem boss ya na echu mmiri that the bible study they were rap each using me echu ba ho ku na na igbo na so ofuma eh na echu ta be dem mmiri ya jama fellowship bia ru obu na oga ya oya ni abi na hand the bible study ya mo so na je chuta pu mmiri ya na echu so i was like why o sim gine ka na on at was na shade na ndo ya ni ho na eku ni ya na bo nya anya fat na hey i was so disappointed ana lady we ni aka nkwa see na madam oha kwara wickedness na ajo mado see am na agboko yo nu e che mi da na the woman the wicked or na obo ajo osimba na ogbako e abu nye pastor can ye ni abi is very important my brethren that you check feedback from those children how are you feeling are you happy to be a member of the mugudi ho mugeku especially when you have grown up once because of you were on tonto maka you don't know what we are dealing with i came home sir my wife told me go to your room you will see at your study on your study table petition written by your children against you i had copy the yawa they wrote they signed they copied my wife so mbago we take the petition go brethren and people of god i was guilty as charged i'm telling you let me mention some of my sins had there my come me him that had there number one daddy will always tell us to go and arrange his room so that his room will be wonderful and that when we finish arranging the room she will not appreciate us hey so abu moyi be mara number two daddy will travel and return home only with his bible But when mommy is returning from any trouble she will enter into shop right buy things for us. Mo na ho na nya ezo. 
You know, there are three, am I helping anybody? There are three stages of your life with your children. My first daughter, Muizizim, will be 22 years in October 16. Okay, we are we don't mark and we. These are argumentative children. So, then with the three stages of your life with your children, the first stage is when you dictate for them. They won't argue with you. You are the man in charge. The second stage, when they will begin to argue with some of your principles, when, because they are exposed, their world is different from our world. I was teaching parents on 21st century parenting. No, the quiche, na mbene na na isurai. A mother na se mnyanwai. Go and call your sister. I want to talk with her. On an happy food. Osem me from na se go and call her. Osem mommy hold on. It's coming. One thing thing can happen. Say mommy, you called me. Osem, I said I just chatted with him that mommy is calling you. Eh, ban okita. Are you hearing me? So the second one is when they begin to argue with your policies. Some of the things you say, eh, now they hear it. I say, why? Tell us. I was to preach in the National Fire Conference of Salvation Army. Salvation Army Church in the whole Nigeria. They were arguing. One of the sections, I don't know to take my slot. There was heated argument. The young people, how many is white here? You know, Salvation Army, they put white. Now, they. Now, why is it hard to change? I'm born and born and white. See, me, I came well on your journey. You are not your he. Argument. The National. Man of Uziem, so okay, that our speaker is here who we'll debate letter. Hey, I was invited to preach in the provincial conference of Cherubin and Seraphim. When I came in, I noticed that some members are not putting on white. More the chief super apostle. See, I'm going to you her white on the Cherubin. I said, No, I remember. Now, in Maria, if you are officiating, you don't white. If you are not officiating, wear anything you like. Because an argument, that's generation Anno. That generation Anno. So when a stage, okay, some of your policies, your, your children will be querying it. And it is better you allow them to speak than subdue them. Because some of the last stage, women and women not three stages. One, but when you are in charge. Two, when they begin to argue. But the third one is when they are in charge over your life. As in back, and I say, Kanka, what is In Marampa, so help me God. This is a Nigerian pledge. You're going to go to Nigerian pledge. I'm going to bet here. Mark, I got to help. My father is 87 years. He's there in with my mother. Never have been now. What they have now about Adam and Eve. My God, Hannah Bobby. We dictate for them now. Most of the times, he say, "Hey, naturally in my village, instead of that, I'm driving. I'm the busy. I'm on buggy. So he get chill until weekend. When I'm less busy, I can now say my driver. Oh, no, 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 do you know, sirs and mas, if you neglect them, now they are young. They are going to abandon you when you are old. So you need to understand whether they are happy now. My daughter wrote something for me on the Father's Day, Sunday. I was to preach in a church and I read that and I, I, I cried. I, tears. I said that he 
she enumerated my levels, my commitment, my affection, my love towards her. I am counting it down. My husband and I will pay you. I don't know what you But at least, it's one half of the money. I'm not going to be here now. But I'm not going to be here now. I'm not going to be here now. There are some children that are preparing to punish their parents because the parents are not doing well. So, kindly ask your children whether they are happy. The house help whether they are happy. It is important. Let me say this and I will move from there to number seven. Is it seven or six now? In 1996, I was sent to theological institution in Enugu. I finished that and I moved to another in 1999. But that one in 1996, our lecturer, who happened to be the former vice chancellor of UNN and the, the former vice chancellor for Federal University in AKT, and then the former minister of power, I'm talking about Professor Chine Dunebo. He was our lecturer in that 1996, with other men from abroad. One of the girls preachers from U.S. said something that shocked me. It became a matter to my life. The man said, he, he was talking about feedbacks. You know, if you are into advertisement, if you have a product you are marketing, one of the major concerns is feedback. How do people value their this product? Are they maximizing their utility? That is when we go here, go here. Or are they happy? For instance, nonsense here, to fear. Feedback. So that man of God was teaching on feedback to preachers from their homes, not from the congregation who are praise singers. Because some of our congregations are praise singers. Hey, Pastor. You bless me today. Thank you, man. Man, I want you here. Say, "Thank you, Adaba." They are not your fans. You need feedback from them. So the man was saying, "I wonder if you have a wonderful message." They go away. I could a man from US. They go away. I could pay a message to that. You when he read dinner. How did you see my message? He was asking with excitement. It was wonderful. The daughter. See, I was not listening to you. I was reading church magazine. The man said, what? How come you are reading church magazine when your father was on the pulpit? I said, because yesterday I brought my report card. And I have good grades. You are so busy in the office. You never looked at my pro card. You never even appreciated my grade. But because of that, I'm not happy with you. So when you are preaching, I'm not there. Man of God, see, I have to go to hand in Banyan apology. I'm sorry. I was actually preparing a message yesterday. That's why I didn't report to sorry. I say, I have to apologize to my daughter who was disconnected from my message because of my attitude towards her. Most of the time, sir, they don't hear you. The people heard you, but your children, they are not happy. You need to ask them. Is anyone blessed by this? Now, let me rush this remaining one. Number seven, six, sorry. Family image or reputation can make or mar individual member. Family image, family reputation. Some of you as ministers, you need to upgrade your attitude and behavior so that your image and reputation can make your children. There was a conference my daughter organized in UNICEF when she was in her third year. When the vice chancellor of UNICEF heard that this is the daughter of Evangelist Nam Deze, he assigned that and asked them to use the main auditorium for that conference. I was there. 
She organized financial conference for the children, students. How a student can be, be a student must still name with the way go. Gary need to stop Gary parents here. How you can be a student and you are financially independent, not negotiating your finances with your parents, and yet it is not affecting your education. That was what my daughter thought. She brought many speakers. I was there to speak, but not to bless them. Other financial experts who spoke on intelligent management of your time, all of them, I was so blessed to have a little daughter of mine organizing such a conference for university community. The HOD of her department celebrate her. The head of the faculty, they were happy to see a daughter of a minister operating in that dimension. Then there are some ministers also mentioning their names is enough to close the door against their children. True or false? Us no more pastor daughter. Agwa, what do you know? Does <laughs> about because of the lifestyle. So we need to live our lives as ministers in such a way that our images and reputations will give an open door to our children. Is somebody blessed by that? My name is enough to give credibility to what my children is doing. And our boy, legacy. So we live for two reasons, as and mass. Posterity and legacy. Posterity and legacy. My girl, she has three suitors from abroad. Two from UK, one from US. Lecturers, ne kuziri anatodiye, was pleading for her to become the wife. Lecturer. In fact, yana unyem ne J Lagos. I'm with a, a party, a birthday surprise birthday, a friend organized for her husband Nasaba. So myself and the driver, we preached in one Roman Catholic church in Nasaba, and then we came to that party. My wife, yeah, be at party. Just because they came to the high table, we sat down, a woman of fear. She will finish her first degree. We have arranged her to go and do her second degree outside the country. When she got her master, at least can stay in her legs. But there are some children, their parents in Meche Rosa, even though they are ministers. Live your life for posterity, live your life for legacy. Number seven, the most times, most times, Satan do not attack the church, but it attack the home, the family. Satan mar under the church, both the body of Christ. He will not attack the church. He will focus his attack on whom? The small cell of the church. True or false? So the devil knew that the mechanism, the composition of the church is the home, family, people from different families. So on be attacking the church, he will go to homes, protect your home. Protect your home, sir. That is where the attack is measured. The enemy is facilitating attack against Christian homes. Winches in South Africa declare 60 days fasting and prayer. And they openly publicize it in the national tabloid and they have national press conference for the purpose of that fasting. So the purpose is the collapse of Christian marriage. It's open. You know, it's in Nigeria, you can call somebody a winch. When you go abroad, people put crest. You know what is crest? 
Yes, I'm a witch. You know, I feel they, they, I'm a Christ. I'm a witch. I mean, one of the best churches in America is in Florida. It's Church of the Winches. It was built with gold. I went to preach in the capital of Germany called Berlin. Now, in the third day of that meeting, the cold became severe. It was in November. The cold, the terrible. So, I have to ask the brethren, naturally, you go another winter garment. My gloves, my hour, the cold, the horrible. In fact, the car, HIV, and a upper and my lodge. In the morning, I'll be man for the car. It will be covered by snow. So, I got about frost. Chill for some time before it froze, you know. It was horrible, brother. So I went to buy the winter garment in a Jewish supermarket. It was about eight story up and then seven basement, seven down. Do you know for 30 minutes, 35, we were looking for parking log? Everybody got parking motor. Now, parking space, I have for a parking space. Bado ebe adoka Nigeria ebe onye for the kwe moto. Oku ya no ti etu uriya. And onye mwa no nyere zere moto. The only place we found there was a small signboard in there. A day exclusively reserved for wizard. Wizard don't have musume okay. So you see Pastor Stony wait wait wait. I gonna calm down now. Also for what? So to remove that. So no 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 no. The witches here and the wizard they create troubles here. It was reserved for wizard. I'm I'm a kind of matter It is reserved for us. The body to no see a park. Let me see somebody who will come here to know whether I belong to a wizard or not. Be the ministration keta keta. No bodo you be back. So winches are fasting and praying for the collapse. Of Christian marriage. After that fasting, one of the fastest growing churches in South Africa, the pastor divorced the wife and married a member of the choir. The church collapsed. Guide your home. Guide your home. Satan lost nothing. When your home is in disarray, sir. Satan So he has no family. He didn't lose anything when your own family is disarrayed. Guide your home. Guide jealously your home. Number eight, a healthy family makes up a healthy church and a healthy society. In the same vein, unhealthy family make up unhealthy church and unhealthy society. If you can have a healthy society in Insube, then we must have a healthy families. Because the family metamorphosed to the church and they spread in the society. I handled this topic with the government and the good people of Delta State at the government house at Saba. When the governor Okoa was the governor, the wife invited me to handle this teaching. A healthy family makes up a healthy society. One of their daughters flew from South Africa to that meeting. And she said to the governor and the wife, it was the wife of the governor that told me this. That the daughter said to them, if only this you achieved as a governor, come out, I'm proud of you as a parent. It was a classic teaching how we must live our lives from the home in order for it to reflect in the society. We have taken a kind of survey to check about children who are nuisance, security risk, braggant non-entities, drop out in schools, miscrats, all of those things, they came from dysfunctional families. None. Very small percentage came from family. The majority of them came from homes where the parents are not friends. Abone is wrong wa wa ofu makita. Ani eme o shebe, o shebe, o shebe. De mana na ato okute. Mwa ga ha na abwa shita asu. Mana jeke family se be nene etin na ihe, nene etin mwa ihe. Eme ha na pa mwa he bo botro. Because that is what on our phone is in honor. 
Let us paint a better picture that the society will look at our children and say, whose daughter is that? Whose son is that? Ah, I'm a pastor. You don't act. No wonder. No wonder. No wonder. We expected that. Number nine, fathers and mothers are drivers and conductors in a vehicle called family. Fathers and mothers, they are drivers and conductors in this vehicle called family. So you and your wife as a minister, as a leader, were a paramount role to play to drive this vehicle called family. Number 10, family first before ministry, profession, career, and business. Family first before ministry. The structure organigram that God has put in place with some of us just opposed by virtue of ignorance of divine ordination is that some of us take God first, ministry second, family third. No, no. Sorry, sir. The structure organigram, structural organigram of God is God first, family second, other things third. So you must give priority to your own family as a minister. Otherwise, you will regret. Oh, God, if I know you will be to this number, I asked Pastor Koye, I will have brought a book. In one of my books, Essentials of a Godly Family, I dedicated the last part of that book that covers about six chapters to tell stories of so many pastors who were very powerful in ministry, but they lost at home. Each time I read that book, it's a book that I wrote, but each time I read that book, I go home again to pray for my children. How did the conference of gospel minister children started? It was in 2020 during COVID. We were all at home. I was studying the book of Judges, and I came to a place in Judges chapter 2 that the Bible says, there arose a generation that knew no God. And I was like, who handed over to them? Nothing. How come? And I began to pray for my own children. While I was in prayer with my wife, the Lord said to us, this revelation I gave to you is not just for your children. Extend it to the children of other gospel ministers. Bishop Obiora, we are part of them. Bishop Esedebe, go. Mention leading pastors and bishops in the Pentecostal world in Niana and Branson. They are part of that meeting. We all gather together to see how can we salvage the children of gospel ministers. This year, about 31 dioceses of Anglican Church brought their clergy children with their buses to that camp. The bishops were calling me, saying, thank you for taking this responsibility to bring about a breach. We are in a society we are ministers are not giving attention to their homes. In that my book, I spoke about, I wrote about a man who was a televangelist in America. He traveled all around America, packing stadium with thousands and people coming to listen to him. His commitment to the ministry was at the detriment of his affection in his family. He lost his wife. The wife divorced him. The water committed, the daughter committed suicide. And the first son was one of those that falsely proclaimed that he's a gay. The man died out of depression. I also enumerated about another minister who gave so much attention to ministry at the expense of his family. By the time he returned from abroad, many things has happened. A man of God near Boku Chukuna Church, Yotua, somebody Ghana as a church in your mammary. Me 
the man of God non appropriate. I love you guys and I know you are committed to God but please listen to these five points and we close. Why should I put my family first above all things? Why? Please take these five points and I will be done. Number one, my family is a reflection of my life. My family is a total mirror, mirror of who I am. What people are consigned is not about the name they say. They are much, much consigned. His children, his wife. Whenever I come to preach in a meeting, I am so careful to look at the wife of the pastor. Her facial countenance will tell me, maybe, maybe, gonna allow the whole level. Because women don't know how to pretend. Man of God, we say, celebrate mommy, celebrate mama. She's in the house, celebrate her. I need to celebrate. I mean, why I need to celebrate. I know one day, mother, you won't need to celebrate. You won't have to You have to cover it up. And some of us, when you are coming to the church, you look at her face and say, oh, two are you good? Why part of my group? See, pass out this in the room. I know how you don't work. Your family, sir, is a reflection of whom you are. That's why a minister needs to put his family in order. Not just a family as your wife and children, your family structure. The as a man of God. Some of you come where say you na beg dust. On a range ballon. A dirty environment in a CC. Money be a minister. Your family is a reflection of whom you are. Your family cannot grow above you. It is what you give them, they will reflect to the society. Nothing happened to you. 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 Nothing happened the same and some from man of God, Whenever I want to know the actual cleanliness of a woman, I go to her toilet and her kitchen. I want to ease myself. I see the children. And if you be behind our daughter, okay, please come. Just the right door. How man so Just the right door. If you know me, go to her. We confidence. If you go there, you might meet your boy boy. See, not a carry your and a flush and a flush. Do see a baby. Do see a baby. A man of God taught me many years ago there are three things every pastor must put into consideration if your life will be longer. Your home, your car, and your office. I don't know if you hear it. But these are places you stay more. Your home, the car you use. I'm a pastor. i a pastor. I was telling him, let him use a pillow. Moto ya tiana. Uku. Because one anya carrier. And those are ya maka. A man with problem na spine. An office. But an office on ya or den kanka. Chick. Their family is your reflection. Uku send them mother pasana big in apple. That's a kai. The man of God that. But on a big yard palace, let it reflect something that represents whom you are. Neat, smelling nice. Abu hoye no na 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 oche palo. 
him will draw you unique. Which is more AC. A better album, Mammy, what I can you know. And I better a book with ever. Teach your children to put their things in order. Arrange things. Madam, not you ask you to say, Beggy. Ministry is not all but pulpit. When John the Baptist introduced Jesus to his disciples in John chapter 1, verse 35, the Bible says, As he saw Jesus walked, Jesus needed, not as he see Jesus preaching. Jesus was just walking. He said to them, Come, behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Go home. Jay does it too big. Tea flowers. There are some deodorants. When we meet in Aino for four days, that we ended yesterday night. Honestly, when you go to the toilet, you will eat. It was smelling nice. There are some brethren who are there. He said, This place is wonderful. There are some odorants you can put in the toilet, it will smell nice. We've been a toilet or a last year. You just turn on the off, man. I put my bed in your room. Then, then I put my room. I never see anyone. I'm up and me and they go and they go and In fact, I never go and they make more. Because there are pastors who are embarrassment. I say much about this when I go to Anglican setting when I'm teaching the clergyman. I'm a local school. I'm a couple from Pastor J. Ba. He now do easy. Can't do it. Ba. Children are careless, the wife is careless. The place was so dirty. It's not a good reflection of a minister. Number two, why should I put my family first? My children are the product of my life. Your children are your products. And are your products. They resemble whom you are. They reflect what you stand for. They are total picture of your representation, sir. Marie home you will have no homo pastor. So don't give you a boutique. Okay, I can know say the man. A good tea saw you off from all copia a day a day. A mamma no cracker. A party of quebes go ya. Don't allow them to put on rags. It degrades your personality. Pastor, pastor, pastor. Call them. Madam Baya Abu Yisi. Madam Kwahane Yi. Abu Yisi Uti Jewara. When you get so cheers as a woman of God, how's the help in your harag? I was okay, they disappointed. Do that on Saturday. I have taught my children, prepare your tomorrow today. Chipotana Kunu. I have fear on a Saturday. No goodness. That's what happened in my house for the younger ones. Chipotana Kunu. I fear on a Saturday. Mommy, a fet, yeah. Chipotana Boko, a fet, yeah. Just talking. Because these guys are funny. So do that on Saturday. A day you do be no check. Start going no check in a room. Fine. When you go to bedroom, you come out, put on things, go in a dizzy. Abu ye fumwa gi hoi. Oneke neke neke no yaza. Because you don't want to identify with your don't can call. The same thing. Our wives. Help your wife because dress code of a man is so simple, but that of women are too complex. yellow. <laughs> 
enjoy your sin in your juke quenson all the way in You know, maybe lie, you say, madam. You say, madam, you know, maybe lie. You can do nonsense, I'm going to do Color riot. I was proud of Boye. One day he was at the airport. The pressman followed him. I said, Papa, Papa, people are coming to your church with trousers. Some of them are not covering their hair and all of that and all of that. And we, are knowing, we know you as a holiness preacher. What is your stand on this? Also, her church is a psychiatric clinic where mad people come. So when people are mad, you don't tell them to dress well until you cure their madness. But if you want to know my stand about dressing, watch my wife. He just walked away. Watch my wife. If you want to know my stand about dress code. And the church, we've been there and I've been there. I've been there and 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 Watch my wife. And when you watch the wife, if only standard, watch your wife. Maria Munyagine, Jilaka or Jeria Taylor. I would not tell one keep the police in one and sube. Oh, you lucky, Mamma Moya, Yapa, 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 number Two more, I will be done. My family is my altar. Mm. When I discovered this revelation, it's helped my life so much as a gospel minister. My family is my altar. Do you know, brethren, some of us take pride that we go somewhere for personal set apart. Since I did them three days, no. It sounds spiritual, but let me tell you the deficiency of that. When it does appear, your own family altar is without fire. Hmm? You now go and collect fire and come and drop it in a ground, no wood, no fire. Give it three weeks. So, I was studying the book of First and Second Samuel, and one of the things that bothered me about that was how did Samuel survived? His mentors died. Three of them in one day. Eli, Hophini, Fina. Even though their lives are not wonderful, but three of them died one day. And that young man did not quit for ministry. But how did he survive? I saw something I want to show you from the scripture and then I tell you the second and the last and we'll pray. First Samuel chapter 7. First Samuel chapter 7. Oh God have mercy. Try to the time. First Samuel chapter 7 verse 15 and 17. First Samuel 7 verse 15 to 17. The word of God says, I'm reading with New King, okay let me read with NIV, New International Version. Samuel continued as Israel leader all the days of his life. From year to year, he went on a circuit from Bethel to Gilgal to Mizpah, judging Israel, and in all those places. But look at verse 17. But he always went back to Ramah, where, number one, his home was. Where, number two, he held court for Israel. 
Where number three, he builds an altar there unto the Lord. Samuel built an altar in his family. Please, brethren, can you listen to a few minutes? A kind of meeting point between him and God. Not a visiting place to meet with God. He built an altar in his family where he can meet God on daily basis. Quiet time is important for every minister. Bread is always for breakfast. Cake is always for occasion. Make your Bible reading bread. For bread is used for breakfast, but cake is used for occasion. You need to develop that relationship with God on daily basis from your home. Don't make your home a place of only rest. Make your home a meeting point between you and God. Samuel built a strong and fortified altar at Ramah. Now let me tell you, sir, what happened. There was a time David was being pursued by Saul. And David ran to Samuel at Ramah. Saul sent soldiers to go to Ramah and arrest him. Immediately the soldier entered into the territorial zone of Ramah. They lost network. A man built a territorial covering over that in place that no functionality or activity or principalities and power can operate in that place. The second group came. They were speaking in tongues. Saul himself went. His one was worst. Bible said not that and I swore nearly all night, all day. Because they entered into a territory where a man had raised issues of sense of prayer for many, many times. Do you know some of us, you live close to a native doctor and the man is functioning normal. It means your spiritual antenna is not proper, sir. You miss something in the realm of the spirit. You can live close to an occult man and the man will be operating. Mm -mm -mm. Something is missing. His spiritual frequency is higher than yours. That's why he's still connecting. When you rise, you disconnect him. And you can only do that from your base. Here yeah, for some church on Oreba. The man customers. In fact, he joined the keke. How can we ever have the DB? Can I have the pastor? Is so you can in a gen and ke Pastor Solomon or Senior Maria. Man is an image and can Google a juke. Google Negu, Eden Negu, or so by a Kenya. In that, why is it that the name of the native doctor is more resounding than the Kekemwe? But not the pastor. It says frequency matter. Am I blessing anybody? Please, sir, go back. Your home is your altar. Don't take pride. For the queen of pulpit, I'm just arriving from the mountain. I went to a mountain in Oshobo. It's a visiting place, sir. What you collect there, if you have no altar, a big enough fan into flame, it will die in three weeks. But if you have an altar, boom! And the territorial spirit in charge of your territory, we know that there's a light in this environment. Make your home your altar. That's, I, I can't remember last. I'm not saying this to be sarcastic or being arrogant. But I can't remember last I went out for a personal Sudan bath. My hope. I learned this principle. My hope. How many of you have watched one film and up all boardroom? A prayer film for women. Eh? War room, sorry. Yes, war room. Have anybody watched it? You need to watch that film. But if you want to watch it, you're like you know, you must sit down and give it attention. There was a place, a woman of God, 
died and her house was for sale. That's one of the things that caught my attention in that. Her house was for sale. The person that came to buy that house was a minister. So the agent in a Dugarian room to room, this is her kitchen, very big one. This is her dining table. This is the room. This is the parlor, the dress room. We do better in a small room. The man of God, notice here a sensation of heat in that small room. So again, maybe at the heart, but say that's where the woman prays always. Her prayers, though she was late, generated heat continually in that place. That's what God did. That's the much I can say, sir. Go home and walk home. On your environment. Some of us, you bring people for counseling in your house, and there and there, in Africa, the woman, Akanara, Nabegi, you destroy the altar. The angel on assignment will leave. That place will become a normal hotel for prostitutes. But when you are home, I never ask people to come to my home for prayer. But if I then say to you, meet me at my house, it is rare. Rare before I can invite you to my house. Rare. But if you come, you will never go the same. Papa Enenche told a story that many, many years ago, they invited a man of God. He was privileged to come from Makode to come and pick the man of God at Abuja. And when the man of God finished the meeting, he rushed to the hotel and said to them, don't ever remove the bed sheets. Or the towel he used. Keep it there. He paid for two rooms. Two days, sorry. And came and slept on that, the same bed sheet. Wrapped him. Four. He used the towel of the man of God. So what does that mean? Human beings carry the atmosphere. You are entrance into that environment. The territorial spirit should know somebody different is here. How can they operate and you are there, sir? It means you are not functional. Two more and I will leave you to pray. Everybody blessed by this. Number four, the church is the showroom but my family is the wardrobe. Why should I give my family attention? The church is the showroom. My family is the wardrobe. That's where I dress from. Jesus was being followed by the disciples of John. He turned and said to them in John chapter 1, what are you looking for? If it is about miracle, let me settle it now. They said to him, Rabbi, where do you live? We want to know your dwelling place. We want to know the place you dress from. We see only manifestation of your miracles. But we want to know the source. The church is the showroom. Your home is the wardrobe. Go home and walk on your house. My office is at Oka Road. When you come to Oka Road in Onitra, you will see a lot of showrooms displaying beautiful upholsteries. But I can take you to their workshop. Their workshops are not beautiful. The church is a showroom for manifestation, for demonstration of the power of God. But the source of contact should be your home. Anybody be at your home now? Nah? I'll be at a church that is in the upper room. That's why you need to put environment in your house to be a meeting point between you and God. Do you know that the Missionaries gathered at the home of one evangelist called Philip. Even Apostle Paul and his contingent, they also gathered there. And I was asking, is there no better place to gather? Mm -mm, mm -mm. That man of God had four daughters. Four of them are virgins. Four of them are prophetess. Meaning there are four spiritual antenna in that family. 
in the morning devotion, they will bring prophecy because there's a connecting wire in that house. Your home should be an altar, a wardrobe, where you dress from and come to the church for a showroom. Finally, my family is my first church. My wife and my children are my parishioners. When COVID came, church returned to her base. And what is her base? Families. No church was meeting, but churches were meeting at homes. My church meets in my home. If you read the letter of Apostle Paul, he keeps writing the church of God that meets in the house of Sosos. My wife and my children are my first parishioners. My home is my first parish. A brother went for youth service and he wrote a text to us and said, Sir, I missed something about your family. The morning devotion. That is when I have finished my own quiet time where I breathe out man and breathe in God. And then I will come to the family morning devotion to breathe freshness into the lives of the people before they leave. And the brother said, one of the things I missed as I'm now in my youth service is the morning devotion at your family. A time that I will make sure I bring the word of God to bear and prophetic prayer to set at liberty the people in the family for their business. You must know that some of the demonstration you are doing in the church can be done at home. The house is your first church. Your children and your wife that are your first parishioners. If those one did not believe you, sorry, what you are doing in the church is a waste of time. Most of the time, my wife will have serious things to do. She will come to me and kneel down and say, you are my pastor. Make a prophetic prayer. I want this thing to work. The children cannot go without their coming to kneel before me for my own prayers and blessing. How much did the church in your home believe you? People believe you outside. But those ones who are close, they are doubting whom you are and what you represent. Can you ask the Lord to help me? My family is my first church. When the people leave the church, the presence of God does not stay in empty building. He lives with the people. When the church door is locked and nobody is there, the presence of God, because it's a mobile temple, move with the people. But at your house, people are there always. So there must be an activation, operational system of God's presence always in your home. Make your home your first church. Make your children, your house help, your first parishioners. The first battle that Abraham went was a battle against four kings of four different nations. In Genesis chapter 14. But he used soldiers that he trained in his own home. These are slaves. He bought them with their mon his money. But he trained them to be instrumental of battle. I saw Papa Abraham teaching them on how to handle sword. Teaching them on how to shoot arrows. Teaching them on how to throw spear. He trained 318 qualified soldiers whom he took to battle. And they conquer. Can you begin to train your house heads? Pray for them in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So that they also can be baptized. And become pipeline for spiritual fire. Give attention to your home sir. That is your wardrobe. That is your first church. They are your first parishioners. Rise up on your feet as we pray. Inanka toma halagadabo shani. 
I put you in front, in front of my melody. You are all the matters. You are all the matters. 